Hello, my name is Steve Byram. I'm the product manager for data acquisition products at Yokogawa. In today's short video, we're going to introduce the SmartDAC Plus GX20 data acquisition station. This unit is a standalone data acquisition device that measures, displays, and records process data. The stellar features of the GX are the new multi-touch touchscreen operator interface and the new modular I.O. hardware. So the unit is very flexible and covers a wide range of, of process measurement applications. In today's video, we're going to demonstrate how quickly we can set the unit up to do measurement and data recording. So first, a quick tour of the hardware. What I'm holding here is the GX90 series analog input module, and I've got a T-thermocouple pre-attached to the module. So what we're going to do is turn the unit around, have a look at the rear panel, install the module, and get the unit set up to do um, channel measurement and data recording. So the first thing is we're going to turn the power off. We always want to attach the modules with the power turned off. We'll have a look at the rear panel. And on the GX20, we have 10 module slots. The slots are numbered 0 through 9. So the first thing we're going to do is undo the terminal cover for slot 0 and pop our module in. Just take the cover off, module slides in, it'll snap right into place. And we just cinch down the retainer screw and we're good to go. And this process is repeated for uh, any other modules for additional channels that are used on the unit. In this application here, we're using a single 10-channel GX90 uh, module, so we've got 10 universal inputs, and again, we're going to use a T-thermocouple on channel 1 for our demonstration. Your GX may also come from the factory with the, with the I.O. pre-installed. We have options to allow the unit to be ordered with the analog inputs or digital output relays uh, pre-installed at the factory. If that's the case, you won't need to install the modules when you receive the unit. So now we spin the unit back around, we're going to turn the power on, and now we'll be ready to start setting up the unit once the machine boots up. Okay, so we've just attached a thermocouple wire to channel 0001 on our input module, and we're ready to start our configuration. So the first thing we do is press the blue menu button on the front panel. That's going to take us to the main uh, setting screen for the GX and we're going to touch browse and then we're going to go to initialize calibration and we're going to choose a function called reconfiguration so we touch reconfiguration and then touch execute and then touch reconfigure in the lower right corner click OK and what this does is it the GX um, is basically taking inventory of the, the modules on the rear panel. So in about 10 seconds, it's going to go out and look for any attached modules and then read the settings and configuration from the modules and it's ready for all the channel settings that it needs. So we're all done. We're going to touch exit and go back to the main screen. Okay, the next thing we're going to take a look at is the temperature unit settings. For thermocouple and RTD measurements, the GX reverts the defaults the settings to degrees C. If you'd like to see temperature displayed in degrees F, hit the menu key, touch the setting menu, and you'll see the main setting uh, menu directory on the left. Slide your finger up and go to system settings, choose environment language settings, go to temperature, and then change the units from degrees C to, to degrees F touch F and then touch save. While we're here in the in the system settings menu we're going to touch the sound LED menu and we're going to activate the menu key LED to indicate an alarm event. So we touch menu key LED, set that to alarm and then touch save. We're now ready to set up our channel range so we're going to touch the menu directory list to the left bring that all the way back to the top and we're going to touch AI channel settings. We now go to range, we pick our channel, in this case we're going to use channel 001 which is already set as the default. We touch type, set that to TC, touch range, set that to T for our T thermocouple, and then we're going to set the span lower 
to 0, 0.0. We're going to set the span upper to 100.0. Touch OK. The span settings set the upper and lower boundary for the trend scale. Now touch save when you're done. The next thing we'll do is set a high channel alarm for, or set a high alarm for channel one. So back here in the AI channel setting menu, we touch alarm. We're going to go to alarm level one, set that to on. We're going to choose a high alarm, which is the first alarm in the list. And you'll see high alarm, low, or high limit alarm, low limit, rate of change high, rate of change low, time delay high, time delay low. So we're going to use a high alarm. And we're going to set a value of 82 degrees. and then touch save. The next thing we're going to do is visit the display group settings and make sure we have channel one in our display group so we can see it in group number one. Go to display settings, touch group settings, turn on group number one, and then you'll see a channel set selection. You can also assign a name to the group and the default is group one. You can change that to any descriptive name you'd like to use. So for channel setting, we're going to touch channel set and we're going to put AI channel number one all by itself in the group. And we're going to look at the other communication channel settings here. We're going to turn off that channel and math channel uh, A001 we're going to turn off also because I want channel one all by itself. And when you're done, touch OK. Now click Save. First thing we're going to do is touch Recording Settings. We're going to go to Basic Setting. We're going to make sure Display File Type is chosen. When you touch the menu, you'll see a choice, Display and Event File, or Event File Only. And the Display Data File is a file type that records the trend data which is min-max channel values that are stored at the trend update interval. An event file is simply instantaneous channel data recorded at a fixed interval. So we're going to use display data and we're done on this screen so we're going to hit the back arrow. We're going to go to the saving interval and we're going to select one day for the interval which is 24 hours and we're going to touch save. The next thing we're going to do is set a timer. The timer is going to tell the machine when to start recording a new display file. So we're going to touch the timer settings. We're going to use what's called a match time timer. We're going to set it to day. And then by default, the hour and minute is 00, zero which is 12 midnight and the timer action will be repeat and we're going to touch save. So every 24 hours the timer will expire and we're going to use this as an event to trigger the display recording. The next thing we'll do is go to the event action settings, touch event action. We're going to use the first event action. We're going to set that to on we're going to set the type to match time timer. Timer 1 is going to be used. And then we're going to set the action to save display data. Then we touch save. And we're all ready to start recording. So now we touch exit. We're now on the trend dis display screen. So now we're going to hit the record button. And you can do this two ways. You can actually push the record button or you can touch the menu key and choose record start from the main menu. So now we're starting to record trend data. We're going to grab the thermocouple and we just exceeded our 82 degree set point and we now have a high alarm on the system. 
If I touch the menu key, I can acknowledge the alarm by touching the alarm acknowledge icon. Touch OK. And now that acknowledge act is recorded in the alarm log. That concludes the quick setup of the GX and the, the unit will now sit here and record data as long as you need to or it'll expire the display data file every 24 hours and create a new file and record data continuously. At any point you can stop recording, you could remove the SD memory card from the unit, take it to your PC and review the data with the Universal Viewer software.